I know this is um, for topic two, and it's helping you have a better understanding of the accounting equation. Um, I said this, uh, the lecture this morning was really important to see a replay of, and then I realised uh, how poor it was because I spent most of the time on the blackboard, so none of that information was recorded. So I thought I would put that information down here. So to remind you of the goals that we had for this, was to understand the accounting equa equation and the different ways to express it, to understand the concept of a normal balance, to um, allocate accounts to assets, liabilities and owner's equity, at least at a basic level, to understand what makes up owner's equity, to understand the relationship between the key financial statements and the accounting equation. Um, what I'm not going to address in here is these. They'll be in the lecture tomorrow. Um, and I know how to identify the debit entry of a journal and understand how accounting changes for different business structures, which again, I won't do here. We'll do that tomorrow. Um, some other goals, just a refresh of, yes, I know what an account is, I know what the chart of accounts are, I know what T accounts are in the relationship to the general ledger, and I also suggest for this that you watch and fully understand the video called The Accounting Equation. It goes for 13 minutes and 2 seconds. Right out. Let's get into the transactions that we have here, and let's see what you're given. Number one, you're given the chart of accounts. So we've only got six accounts, cash at bank, motor vehicle, accounts payable, owner's equity, revenue and expenses. So cash at bank and motor vehicle are assets, I hope that makes sense. That's something you own, something you owe, accounts payable, that's liabilities, and owner's equity capital account, that's a summary of all your owner's equity. Now subparts of owner's equity capital are revenue and expenses. So increases in revenue, increased capital, um, increases in expenses, reduced capital. So there's your chart of accounts. An account is anything that we want to record information on. So we want to know how much money we have in the bank. We want to know what money people owe us. So we set up an account for those things. <clears throat> and all the accounts together is called the chart of accounts. Then we have transactions and we bring transactions to uh, account in a journal which will be down here we won't do that next uh, first and then we'll post those journal entries to the general ledger which we're using two accounts for we'll summarize that in the trial balance and then and then we will do um, the financial statements which will be the income statement and the balance sheet and as well as in the middle of the statement of changes in equity. Right, uh, the first thing that we're going to do is look at the accounting equation um, and look at the impact of transactions on it. So accounting equation is assets equals liabilities plus owners equity. So we could put an equal sign in there. You could put an equal sign in there and a plus sign in here. So assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. Let's see what happens. Transaction, um, the owner puts $1,000 into the business. So that's an asset, $1,000. And um, because the owner's put $1,000 in the business, they have equity of $1,000. So we can see that the owner's equity of $1,000 is represented by the asset of $1,000 cash. Then we purchase a vehicle on credit for $2,000. I haven't got that in here on credit, but $2,000. So what do we have? We have an asset of $2,000 and we have a liability of $2,000. And I'm going to count this liability as an account payable. So purchase a vehicle on credit. I'll just blow this up a little. Purchase a vehicle on credit for $2,000. 
and therefore our assets are $2,000 being the vehicle and our liabilities are $2,000 uh, being the account payable. What's the accounting equation look like now in total? Well, our total assets are 3000 our total liabilities are 2000 and our owner's equity is 1000 And we can see our accounting equation remains in balance. 3000 equals 2000 plus 1000 We could also reorganise this, and if we all reorganised it to say owner's equity equals assets minus liabilities, we would see owner's equity is 1000 equals 3000 assets minus 2000 liabilities, which again is 1000, it still works. So what's our owner's equity represented by? It is represented by our $3000 worth of assets less our $2000 worth of liabilities. <coughs> Next we provide a service for $500 cash, that will increase our assets by $500 and it will increase our owner's equity being revenue of $500. And again, our new accounting equation is 3,500 assets to $2,000 liabilities and 1,500 owner's equity. And where does the 1,500 owner's equity come from? The owner put um, $1,000 in, plus they made a sale of 500 so that's where the 1,500 comes from. Then there was also an expense incurred and rent expense. So what happens to the asset? It's going to go down 400, minus 400. No change to liabilities and owner's equity will go down 400 because $400 has been spent. So what's the new accounting equation? 3,100 equals 2,000 plus 1100. Again, the 1100 is the 1500 minus the 400. So there you get a sense of how the accounting equation stays in balance. So that should now become reasonably easy to bring these items to account, and we bring them to account by writing a journal for each transaction. So we've got four transactions to write. How does the journal go? Well, let's say this is June 1. First journal, um, some rules about journals, debits are on the left and debits come first. So what's the debit here? A debit would be an increase in an asset. An increase in an asset, cash at bank. So cash at bank is an asset. And it is a $1,000 debit. What's the credit? Credits are on the right, so we indent here, and the credit will be owner's equity capital. Owner's equity capital credit. So there's our first journal entry. Journals will always stay in balance. Debit cash at bank 1000, credit owner's equity 1000. How do we know what was the debit, what was the credit? An asset. An increase in an asset is a debit, an increase in owner's equity is a credit. Then we would have a comment down below here which would, would go something like um, owner invested $1,000 cash. Now we have the next transaction and that is January Two. Actually, June. I've been going on a June two. We've purchased a vehicle on credit for two thousand dollars. So, what's our asset? Our asset is motor vehicle. It's an asset that increases. So, motor vehicle debit on the left. Motor vehicle. $2,000 and we're going to have a credit of $2,000 and what will that be? That will be accounts payable. Accounts payable. Payable.
payable two thousand dollars and the comment will be purchased vehicle for credit next journal we have will be June 3 and that is um, cash sale so what's the debit cash at bank increases $500 and the credit entry is revenue so anything that increases owner's equity is a credit revenue will increase owner's equity so revenue revenue is sales $500 and we'll put cash sale the fourth entry June now what's your um, debit entry here well our bank is going down so our bank is in fact going to be a credit one two three cash at bank our bank has gone down four hundred dollars to indicate a fall in an asset we make that a credit so credit four hundred dollars and what will the debit be well we have an expense we've got rent expense so we don't really um, have rent there, so we just put expense, $400. So they are the journal entries. Next, we post those journal entries. So where do we post those journal entries to? Well, let's go over and have a look at the general ledger. And here is a general ledger we are using T accounts. Now we can see assets here, let's put the names in, we've got number 100 is cash at bank, number 150 is motor vehicle, actually what is more likely to happen would probably have the name of the account first and then the number but liabilities accounts payable but I'll stick with what I've done 200 then owner's equity owner's equity is the capital account it's equity capital and that is 300 and then we have two other um, subcategories of owners equity being the revenue and expenses so 400 is revenue and 500 is expenses now T accounts is how um, a general ledger was once kept it's no longer kept that way but the T accounts are a very visual representation of what's happening so that's what they're really good for you to get a picture of what's going on so that's why we're using T accounts so what we're going to do next is post the journals to the general ledger and the general ledger here being the T accounts so we'll start off with the first one post cash at bank we've got debit to cash at bank debit cash at bank 1000 now we've got something over here a P -res reference the P reference stands for posting reference and to indicate that we've posted the journal we write in the posting reference and that tells us that we've posted this to general ledger account number 100 next we've got owners equity 1000 So credit, owner's equity, 1,000, and to indicate we've posted that, that's 300. I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller still, so we can fit some in. Next, we have account payable, so we have motor vehicle asset, debit, 2,000 
and we have credit to accounts payable, 2000. So you can see debits are on the left, credits are on the right. That's applicable for the accounting equation in big picture. Assets, debits on the left, liabilities plus owner's equity, credits on the right, and within each transaction, with each account, debits are on the left, credits are on the right. So we've posted those, we've posted the motor vehicle to 150, and accounts payable to 200. Next, we have cash at um, bank, we need to post that, so 500, so we post this item, $500, cash at bank, and we can put in here 100 to indicate we've posted that. And then we need to post to the revenue. Sorry, yeah, revenue. And the revenue we can see is a credit over here. Credits are on the right, 500, and that is account 400. Just one more journal to post. And that is expenses are 400. So we go expenses. Expenses equals 400. Debit. And cash at bank is 400 credit. Now that's been posted to account. 100 and this has been posted to account 500. So what have we done so far? We've um, had a chart of accounts which we've used to set up our general ledger. We've had a number of transactions and what we firstly did which you typically don't do but this was just so how you could see the relationship to the accounting equation we saw how each of those transactions impact on the accounting equation. Then we recorded those transactions in the general journal and then we posted them to the general ledger. Now we're going to summarize the general ledger in the trial balance. Now there's some other things we may notice in the meantime. But the accounting equation will still stay in balance. Let me do one thing first in T accounts. We need to transfer that 400 over that side. So what do we do? We take um, $400 off each side, minus 400. So that's become zero. And often we, you know, and then we go minus 400 on this side. So we'll come up with now a total which is 1100. So we can see our balance there is 1100. So if we add up our assets, we can see the total of our assets are 3100. The total of our liabilities are 2000. And we can see the net total of our owner's equity is 1,000 plus 500 is 1,500 minus 400 is 1,100. So the total of our owner's equity is 1,100 plus uh, liabilities 2,000 equals total of our assets 3,100. But we'll now record that in the um, trial balance. So what do we do with the trial balance? Well, debits are on the left, credits are on the right. Let's put the debit balances in. Um, cash at bank is 1100. Motor vehicle 2000. Accounts payable a credit 2000. Owners equity capital. Now we'll go through a process called um, closing which we won't do yet, where it's about emptying the balances of these accounts, revenue and expenses, into the capital account. But for the moment, we won't do that. So that's 1,000 owners' equity capital, revenue 500, 
and expenses 400. Now our trial balance is called a trial balance because the total of the debits equals the total of the credits. So let's see if that happens. So the total of the debits is 3,500 and the total of the credits is 3,500. So our trial balance balances. Now we can prepare from that the <coughs> income statement and well we can prepare all of the statements really. So <coughs> revenue is 500 less expenses 400 give us, gives us a profit of 100. So that's the income statement. Now, we only had one revenue and one expense account, so that was fairly straightforward. <coughs> then we look at the statement of changes in equity. Statement of changes in equity. Opening balance was zero. Capital introduced was 1,000. The profit was 100. So our closing balance is 1,100. Now let's look at the balance sheet. Cash at bank, 1100. Motor vehicle equals 2000. Total assets equals 3100. Liabilities, <coughs> we have got one liability, accounts payable, and our equity account, well, our equity account, we've come from the closing balance of equity, which took into um, account all of these items down the bottom. So our total liabilities and equity is 3,100, and our balance sheet balances. So, <coughs> Now, <clears throat> if you look at the accounting cycle, you have a transaction, you record the transaction in a journal, you post the journal to the ledger, the general ledger, you summarise the general ledger in the trial balance, and from the trial balance you prepare the financial statements. There's one other thing I would like to point out, or at least one other thing I'd like to point out, is these accounts at the top, uh, from there up, are what's called permanent accounts, and this would make sense. Um, cash at bank, if you've got $1,100 in your bank at the end of the financial year, you start the new financial year, then you've still got $1,100 there. So that's a permanent account. Whereas revenue... If you had total revenue for one year for $500, that's your total revenue for the year. But the next year, we want to start again and measure our revenue for that year. So we empty that out and we start again. Where do we empty it out to? Well, these are all subsets of owner's equity. Uh, of owner's equity. So we empty our revenue exp and expenses into the capital account. So in the end, we summarise all owner's equity in the capital account. And at the end of the year, this is a process called closing. There's one other uh, step in the accounting cycle, which we'll look at later on, which is the adjustments. And also, you'll notice when you do the assignment that we don't do most transactions in the general journal. We do them in special journals. But what you've just worked through is the accounting cycle pretty much in total with a few things that we've jumped over. Now... If you wished to go back and have a look at um, the Lecture 2 Camtasia Relay um, video, well, it would probably make a lot more sense now. <clears throat> and I did say a few things in there that probably are of value. Bye.